Backflow protection is something that a lot of people overlook. Uh, <clears throat> they say water take it quite seriously and I'm not sure if any of you are, were around in the days of um, putting Trefland chemicals through drip tube to stop root intrusion when drip tube was going nuts back in 06. But back then you needed to use two RPZs to protect your water from poten potential contamination. The, the chemical Trefland um, it's not something that they want people drinking and they don't want it in, in the um, water source. So they wanted an RPZ, which is your highest level of protection. This is a dual check, which is your lowest level of protection. It's just two spring-loaded check valves that sit inside of it. This is what they use for residential backflow prevention. And there's just these two... It's not going to work. Spring-loaded uh, white plastic non-return valve so the water can only go one way through those so it goes through two of them and the theory is that uh, it doesn't go backwards and then if there's any breakages in your irrigation system uh, and it can have like a venturi effect where it sucks water back into your system it's not going to suck any dirt or you know animal feces or fertilizer back into the drinking supply and obviously protect your home uh, or your workplace and the people around you so if you're not sure about any of the backflow requirements, uh, most of it's, the information is available on the internet and alternatively, obviously, I've got a team of people that can help you with that. Uh, if you're doing, especially like new home packages, like some of you do, um, you might be putting tap timers on garden taps. They technically require a backflow prevention device uh, as a protection of the, to the mains. The backflow prevention devices that go on a tap are, are small little brass one way spring and you just screw that straight onto the tap and then put your tap timer straight on that and it protects your drinking water supply so that's probably one of the these are one of the things that we don't see people buying as much and i say buying like it's it sounds like an upsell because obviously it's another 40 dollars that you've got to add to your system um it's it's legislated so if you haven't been putting backflows in uh and you haven't been caught yet you you know you might never get caught but it's just a good practice to get into it's doing it the right way which if you're here to learn about irrigation, the company you work for or the company that you own, you obviously want to do things the right way. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here learning about it. So I encourage you to keep your eye on those um, and put backflows in when they are required. Uh, where are we? So commercially, a lot of the backflow stuff, so if you do a commercial um, irrigation system, a lot of the time the builder will cover the backflow and then it'll be in your tender documents. I don't know how many of you guys are doing commercial irrigation systems. Is that? You know, if you did a warehouse or... Uh, not, not yet. Yeah. So if it comes up, a lot of times it'll say the backflow will be by the builder or the plumber and then obviously you can just exclude it, but you just want to make sure that it's there.